so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make like tutorials, very very beginner tutorials for uh, Dream, for specifically Bedlamite and Worker, because Ryder still has a bit of uh, ironing out to do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the Bedlamite run, and I'm going to demonstrate how to do a Bedlamite run for beginners to dream. Um, so, let me go ahead and get my notes on what to teach and what not to teach. <laughs> oh, Roxas. So, we're gonna, I'm gonna try to make a, a couple of tutorials for dream, because I think, I think we need it. I, I, or I think I should finally buckle down and do this, so. So, this will be the Bedlamite tutorial. Um, it's gonna be very, very basic. Um, we're just gonna go straight into it. And I'll try to explain everything as I can. So, that way people are not confused. Hi -ed. So, timing starts after high ed, or like at high ed. Um, just quick, quick thing. That's just when timing starts. Coffee, if you don't mind. Thanks. Here you go. Dry off your back. Now tell me what's going on. I'll give you three guesses. So we're gonna do we're gonna do very as I said, very basic, very beginner friendly tutorial. We're cutting out things like um We're we're cutting things out like elevator skip. QP, CPM, we're cutting up like the harder tricks, and we're just solely looking at like things that people would be able to understand going in to Dream, things that people would be able to pick up, look at, and go, okay, I understand this. So, we're cutting out all the harder tricks. So, with Awake, good luck. By the way, you kind of just head straight to bed during Bedlamite. Well, let's see what sleep shows me tonight. And there you go. How how, we, how am I doing? I'm doing all right, I guess. I don't know. I'm trying to just put together a, a Bedlamite tutorial for people to understand. So, so yeah, you start at about here normally, sure right? So you start here, um, but you can uh, you can hit W and A the minute you start loading in, and you can actually start kind of like walking around, and you can try to make it to this portal during blind walking. Otherwise, you can wait until you're loaded in and just kind of like run to Guardian Quandary. Doesn't lose very much time, but uh, just something to keep in mind. Hello, Master Shadow. I'm trying to do, like, a tutorial for people, for Dream. Now, I'm not going to do any blind walking for this, just because the blind walk here is a little weird. Um, so you can go f upwards to there, but as I said, I'm taking out QP from this tutorial. So we're just going to head this way. Just, just head to your, your right, and there should be a, uh, a catacomb. Turn right, left, about here, you want to turn right again, left, left, until you get to about here, then turn right, and then just follow these wires, to out here, and then you'll get to the computer platform, type in Dr. Mason, tab DRX289, enter. Click light.exe, start, yes, then skip experiment down here, because the game just gives you that option, and you can just hit yes, then back out of the computer, and we'll get the cutscene. Not going to teach CPM, 
because CPM is a stupid trick and it's very inconsistent at times. You can jump, but you can't walk around on this platform. You're not actually allowed to. So like, W, A, S, D. You're not allowed to walk on this platform by normal means. But there is a trick that allows you to do so, and it saves like 20 seconds. But it's very finicky, it's very, like, specific, and there's no guarantee that you're going to get it. So, as far as a beginner goes, don't, don't bother worrying, learning about that. And you just come up here, run to the nightmare portal. And you'll enter Nightmare 1. Then what you want to do, is the minute you get into Nightmare 1, before you even like load in the the room, so before this part happens, you want to like scroll down or scroll up if you haven't had your if you don't have your your jump uh like locked onto a scroll wheel, you can scroll down and you'll open up the uh, alarm clock. Just hit F, and that'll get you out of the nightmare. You want to do that relatively quickly because otherwise you're losing time. Simple as that. And then, um, you try to find your way to the bed, click it again, and you go back into the portal room. Now, as I said, I'm not teaching elevator skip, because elevator skip trips a lot of people up. Anyone who's ever tried to run this game winds up, uh, getting lost to, uh, elevator skip. So I'm just gonna teach the, uh, just gonna teach Bedlamite as I should. There will still be a trick here to learn though, so... So, I'm gonna let the, the load-in happen. Okay. You wanna head up, just this, up the stairs, cause the elevator is slower, basically. Place. Just run up the stairs. Come into here. Come over to the computer. Hello, Rhino SC. I'm doing a dream tutorial right now for people who want to try to learn dream, who want to try to learn uh, Bedlamite. So that's what I'm doing right now. Type in Dr. Brown on this computer, and then it's um, B2TF1955. Type in the TF1955. You can just log in, and you get the puzzles. This is gonna take like seven minutes, but you get 12 points out of it. So it's a lot more than you normally get out of a Bedlamite run, but it's whatever. So the ring puzzle, right, or it's like right one, left two, left three, and then left two, and then that's it for the puzzle. You can just back out. Um, arrive back at the computer. Second puzzle. Okay. Planet puzzle, trying to get all the planets aligned. You come back here. You, uh, there are two panels for each of these, like, little domes. You want to hit the back panel for this one, which will move the, uh, green and blue planet together. Then for yellow, you want to, I think, hit this one. You want to hit this one twice, so yellow and red are lined up. You come over here, hit the back panel for this. You want to hit this twice. And then the red one, you hit the back, uh, you hit the back panel once. Oh, Fire Fist Gaming. I'm at the moment teaching people how to, or trying to teach people how to play Dream while going through the game, uh, quickly. So that way people can kind of see it in practice. It's very hard. For this puzzle, you want to light, uh, light up all the, the boxes. The simple, there's a few answers to this. You can sit here and just spend time, like, trying to figure out the puzzle. Or you can just, uh, come down here. Click this, like the, the bottom corner puzzle, or uh, bottom corner panel, then um, bottom middle, then top right, 
then uh, middle right, and then top left, and then that'll get you to. It's like five, five steps. It's really fast, and it gets the puzzle done quicker. Morning slash. All right, so this one, you just try to like match the these things with these things. It's actually really easy. You can kind of cheat a little bit by uh, by running up to the panels. So you see how this one has like the two ends here within the panel. You can actually just move that this way, and then it matches up. So you can kind of cheat a little bit in order to figure out where everything needs to be, if you need to. Um, otherwise it's really easy. Like, every panel needs to be turned uh, at some point within this in order to get everything lined up. So it's not like there's anything that's missing. You're essentially lining everything up on your own. Careful with offset, by the way. If you do try to learn this. Careful with offset, because offset is stupid in these puzzles, and it's very common. Basically what offset does is it just makes it to where it's like, oh, I'm looking at this panel, say, right? Oh, hello, uh, Quill Shot. I'm right now going through and kind of putting together a tutorial for Bedlamite, for people who want to try to learn this game. I'm trying to. It's going to be kind of a weird tutorial, because I'm kind of also trying to go through the game myself, um, as quick as possible kind of demonstrate, like, the kind of time you can get by doing uh, by doing very beginner strats. Uh, so, yeah, if you guys got any questions, by the way, about the run, or about beginner parts of the run, beginner strats of, of the run, whatever, uh, feel free to ask. I'm always open for questions, or I'm always open to, uh, I'm always open to answering questions about Dream in particular, because this is my fucking child. There we go. That's the puzzle. It just, uh, as I said, you're essentially lining up all of these with all of these, and like every, every panel pretty much needs to be flipped. It's a little tedious, but this is why you learn elevator skip. Um, Otherwise, since this is a very, very beginner tutorial, though, um, nobody, like, nobody's gonna know how to do elevator skip, and elevator skip is the one trick that trips people up the most, so. Um, so puzzle five, what you're expected to do is click this, let the, the panels go through everything. Um, but, like, if you've memorized or have everything written down somewhere, you can actually just go through and do all of the, or like, activate all the panels in the order that it's supposed to be. So we actually have to wait now, because... Because fuck that. But like, yeah, uh, the order of the panels is this bottom one here. Then you go up to the top. Then it's about here, the middle panel. Then down here. Then up here. Then you come over here, and on the exact opposite side, for six, down here, for seven, over here, eight, nine, and ten. You just essentially activate all the panels in order, and it's, it's a memory puzzle, basically. And then, probably my favorite of the pu uh, of the office puzzles, um, tall pipe. So, it's essentially, like, it's essentially the same thing, like before, although it's going upwards, and so you gotta match this all the way up there, all the way to this bulb down here. It's a little bit harder, but it's probably my favorite, because it's, at, well, I find it to be easier personally. It's supposed to be harder though, but I like it. Uh, essentially, you just kind of, I, I find it e to be easier to go from the top to the bottom instead of to the bottom up. Because it just, it makes life just that much easier. Oh god. Offset. You just kinda... So this is what I mean by offset, right? 
So if I if I come down here to try to move this panel, okay, it's gonna work. Well, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes the game, like, the game will maybe think that you're still on this panel. If you look at this panel and go down here. Offset's just kind of an annoyance altogether. Uh, it can happen with anything. It's not just a, uh, it's not just something with these puzzles. It's just a thing that can happen in the game. It's kind of a stupid glitch, but nothing you can do about it. Offset's just the worst. Okay, from there, we can just move on to the elevator. As I said, you want to go back down the stairs because the elevator is slower. Until you get to the bottom floor, back on the concrete floor here. Then you, uh, open it, head on down, and hit the B button. Now, we should already be at the, uh, the basement by now, but it's going to go through this, this cutscene. We're going to try to skip that cutscene. So what we're going to do is we're going to crouch, and we're going to try to crouch clip through the corner of this to hit the button here at the elevator, because you can do that. You can just, like, clip through the camera and activate this one button, and it makes... And it, and it opens the door for you. You can do that, or you, you do that a lot. You do that often with, like, rider runs, but... With worker runs, it's obviously slower, because you're not doing elevator skip. So... But yeah, you can just kind of clip through, clip your camera through and hit the button. To, to get yourself out. Saves a little bit of time. And then you just activate the alarm clock out. Again, like, sec second verse, same as the first, right? So. Uh, find your way back to the bed. Well, let's see what sleep shows me tonight. <coughs> and yes, it is that easy. You can just crouch run up to the wall and hit the button. It's, it is that easy. It's really... <laughs> it's actually insane. I, I wish there was other places that cr crouch clipping could be, like, useful in, but there's not. But anyway, we're gonna go to Ancient Morality next. Crouch clipping is so fun though. Okay, so we're gonna move over here to uh, to this computer. And what you wanna type in? Ultinsula. <coughs> Ulti in S U L A. And then password is change me because someone forgot to change the password. <coughs> you activate this thing and that'll open up the first bridge. You actually find this password over here at this book, the user manual. If you look behind it, it says username, Ultensila, password, change me. So. <clears throat> so we're going to come over to... Doesn't look like there are any stuff like this in here. We're going to come over to the bridge, and the bridge is going to lower down. We're going to do bar taps. Now what you're supposed to do for bar taps is go through each of these, uh, each of these cabins. And there's supposed to be, like, arrows hidden around. I don't exactly remember where the arrow is for this. Oh, yeah. The arrow is right here. So there's arrows in the, in all of these cabins, and you're just supposed to find them all. Uh, and those will lead you over to here. Where there's 14 brews on tap, there's 14 cabins in full. 14 different brews on tap. This um, <laughs> to make this easy on you, um, the ones that you activate are two. Four, five, seven, eight, ten, and eleven. Those all have uh, down arrows. Those tell you to pull those tabs, whereas the others should stay up. All right. Now we're gonna get to, uh, conveyors. Conveyors is the worst part about this entire game, to be honest. Bloody Twitch froze on you. I mean, it's fine. Welcome back. 
So conveyors. Uh, conveyors are the worst things in this entire game. So there's four different cabins. Each cabin has uh, has an order. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to get those things in the. Uh, you're trying to get the the cabins their proper order. So this is champagne. Champagne is supposed to go into cabin one, but right now we're gonna just like dock it, so it's out of the way. Uh, whenever I say I'm gonna dock something, it's basically like pushing this middle button, and it it moves the um, it moves the uh, the <clears throat> item inwards, so you know they can get their order. Um, so we're at, we're gonna essentially dock three, and we're also gonna come in here to four, where there is cake, and we're gonna dock four. We're not gonna dock four's bottom, because we don't really need to right now. We're actually gonna move that later. Um, but we're gonna dock three and four, and then we're gonna come over to two. Two has a burger and some soup, and we're gonna move both of them down. Uh, then we're gonna move the burger down to four because four is docked. We can we can move it there. We don't have to move soup yet, so we're we're gonna keep the soup there. We're gonna undock. You stole my Twitch frames. Oh shit! Have I been dropping frames? That's not good. Also, hello, ah, uh, Raptor. Anyway, so yeah, we're gonna undock the uh, champagne and we're gonna move the champagne down to uh, cabin two. We're gonna dock the champagne in cabin two. Then we're gonna go into cabin one. Cabin one has sushi and uh, some soda. We're gonna move those down. Uh, and by the time we get into cabin two, we're gonna dock the soda, but we're gonna keep moving the sushi down to three. Cause sushi, the sushi uh, is needs to go into cabin three. Cabin three has only ordered sushi, which is why there's no bottom conveyor for cabin number three. So we're gonna move the sushi and dock it where it's supposed to be. We're gonna move the soup also at around this point, because now we can move the soup to cabin one alongside the champagne. And then we're just going to dock them both. Then what we want to do is we want to come all the way to cabin 4. And we're just going to move everything from cabin 4 into cabin 1. Just everything. Okay. Except, of course the cake. We're... Okay, so we're gonna undock the cake, and we're gonna move the cake down to cabin number two. Because we can't put anything in cabin number one. Like, cabin one, number one won't take anything else. So we're gonna move the cake here. And we're gonna also, while we're docking the cake, we're gonna undock the drinks. And we're gonna come over here to move the burger. And we're gonna move the burger and the drinks down to cabin four. Because what they ordered was a burger and some soda. And we're just gonna dock them there. Yeah, I did start with, with my character having half a pot roast. Okay, now we're gonna do is we're gonna move the berries. We're gonna move the berries to cabin three, because we're not done yet. And then we're gonna move the soup to cabin two. So we're gonna undock from cabin one and move the soup down to cabin two. And then we're going to move the berries back to cabin one, and then that'll be the end of the puzzle. 
the worst part of the entire fucking game that's unskippable because every fucking and, and every like every run requires it it sucks i hate this fucking puzzle i wish there was a way to skip it but there is not not currently So the last puzzle is all the way over here, all the way back here, you gotta just kinda run, you kinda just have to follow the path, just kinda run through, and it'll lead you to these cabins back here. Hello Mave, I'm doing like a beginner friendly tutorial for Dream Bedlamite, so that way people don't have to learn how to do elevator skip immediately, and they can still get a run in. Maybe I should sign up for this. Uh, it's kind of admittedly half-assed, but, like, I'm, uh, at, at least there's gonna be something there to look at, basically. So the next puzzle is, it requires all of these different cabins and this safe. So this safe is gonna, the safe needs certain code, or needs a certain code. There's a phone here. We're gonna click the phone, and immediately we're gonna run back there. Uh, and then we're going to be listening for some phones ringing, basically. This is total RNG. So yeah, we're listening for phones ringing, kind of like this one. And we're going to click it, it's going to give us a number, and we're going to try to remember the number. Why did that not... Four. Four, okay. We're going to... We have to remember the number. Gross. I see it. Or I hear it. Just listen for the ringing. Six. Four, six. Four six two. Okay. Six. Four six two six. And so we just remember four six two six as we come over here to uh to the cabin. One, two, three, four, one, oh, shit. Stupid fucking offset, I swear. Okay, four, six, two, six. And we grab the teleporter. Uh, it doesn't really matter where you teleport, really, as long as you don't teleport, uh, next to the hospital side dream. Basically, we're just using the teleporter a little bit, so we can just get closer to where we're supposed to be. Doesn't really matter where it teleports you. Uh, most... Isn't that robbery? I mean, this is a dream, who cares? Basically, we're just trying to get to this uh, bridge. You could teleport, theoretically, to this bridge. The best, the best bit of RNG that you can get is right here. And you, you can teleport here. That's the best RNG you can get. Otherwise, I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's just a little quicker. It saves you, like, a few seconds. Tops. And then we're trying to go back here to this black portal. And if everything goes right... Yep, there's a meteor. That meteor saves us also a few seconds, which is nice. And uh, that's actually RNG to whether or not it comes or not. 
Odds are it will typically come or typically show up, but there's no guarantee. So Nightmare Three skit. When when Howard says he wants to get a glass of water, uh, you can just pull out the alarm clock and hop on out. That's I mean that's Nightmare Three skit. It skips three minutes, but it gives you five points, and then you can hop back in to the uh, the portal room. Hello, Big Mac. <clears throat> What's the thing with the meteor? Why is it there? Why can it not be there? I don't know why it cannot be there. Um, I've theorized that it's the amount of points you get, but you can sometimes get it in worker runs, so I don't get, I don't get that either. So. And in the final portal, you just walk backwards, and you can arrive at the black portal, and you can finish the game in, like, less than 30 minutes with, um, with more optimal oh. movements and what have you. Jesus, that's, that's Bedlamite without elevator skip. <laughs> it's a really weird run, but it's not what I'm used to. But there you go, that's, that's, that's the percent No, I've theorized that with the meteor, it's how many points you get, but I don't believe that's entirely true, because sometimes it, Sometimes it shows up in, in worker runs, sometimes it doesn't. Not entirely sure. Um, I think it's just RNG at the end of the day whether or not it's there. Um, but what it does is it teleports you to Nightmare 3 without you having to uh, activate the portal. And so it saves a little bit of time. It saves just like that, that ever so little bit more. Um, and it's, 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 it's... Because it teleports you sooner than if you got if you went over to the black portal and activate it. It's only like maybe a two three second time loss if you don't get it. So don't worry too much about not getting it. It's not that big of a deal if you don't. But it teleports it, it like it gets you it gets you to Nightmare Three sooner than later. So. So it's, it's a pretty useful thing to keep in mind. Can it spawn anywhere in that dream? Oh no, it's only on the way to Nightmare 3. It's only there. That's where the trigger is. And I don't know what start or what causes that trigger to happen or where what causes that trigger to not be there every now and then. But it's only on the way to Nightmare 3. Only there. It doesn't doesn't happen anywhere else. So there's no way to access Nightmare 3 unless you complete all these puzzles and conveyor. Yes. At the moment, yes. That is... That is the current thing, yes. It could have been something to explore, but there's no current way to, to get there without doing conveyors, sadly. Can't get paid for falling asleep. That would be a dream job. Oh, Howard, really? Well, we can't all be reviewed when we're awake. I see why not. What's your name? If you want to write for it, then you go for it. No one's stopping you these days. Sorry, but I don't buy that. Yeah, I um, I did ask questions to the head dev of Dream once. And they could not give me an answer. They didn't even really know the answer themselves anymore, because it's been so long. Such a shame. That they don't remember.
just need enough of it to get by. And as for luck, well, money can fall back too. If you can't make a decision, flip a coin. At least that way you'll be lucky if it ever comes to pass. Flip a coin? That's the grand advice. Hey, don't knock it. It works for me. Yeah. I guess you're a devil in the eyes. I don't really know if I'd even be the devil of luck. Besides, the world already has a rich life. What would it gain with me as well? I won't be around forever. I thought you said you weren't trained to mope around. You got me. No, I wasn't trying to bring the mood down. I was just trying to say that... Well, what the closest thing I got to the sun was I did use dirt when I went to the school. I don't think I'd mind one bit. I was trying to calm myself. But if I'm honest, So, you have a cabinet full of awards. But yeah, uh, so stuff like elevator skip saves like seven minutes. Stuff like QP saves like seven seconds. Um, I didn't teach QP in this tutorial. I didn't teach elevator skip in this tutorial. Um, I didn't ca I didn't teach CPM, which also means I don't have to teach thermal jump, which would save about twenty seconds. Um. Give or take. Confidence and hard working. You uh, plan for what you want to do, and you always work. Uh, but I've taught, I, I taught pretty much everything else that could save time, uh, for very, very like low level beginners, people who are just wanting to get into this game. Um, I highly recommend it as a speed game. It's a very glitchy game, but it's also, it's also just a really good game. Personally, I think. It's it's good until it decides it wants to be a brat. Because one thing that I should take note if you do plan to get into this, um, if you do plan to get into the speedrunning this game, this game does crash. This game will randomly crash at any given point if you play it for too long. So one thing I do highly recommend if you plan to get into speedrunning this game is instead of going immediately back to main menu, whenever you want to reset your run. Yeah. Um, so like, when you get, like, when you get this game and if you want to start speedrunning it, it will crash. So what you do, and I, I said, like, I highly suggest that you do this if you want to run this, instead of going directly to main menu, just so you can keep doing more and more runs quicker. Quit the game to desktop. Let Steam uh, sync back up the uh, sync back up the, uh, up to the game, and then go back in to do another run. It takes a little bit longer, but it's worth it in the end, so you don't lose seven seconds to a crash. Well, actually, longer if you keep the the, the timer going. But I allow people to pause the timer if Dream crashes because it will crash under certain circumstances depending on how long you play it. Um, the game, the game's not too terribly optimized, um, so that can sometimes happen. Uh, so basically, so yeah, this is the Bethlehemite ending. We're gonna, uh, oh, I can't actually pause in this cutscene. Go figure. Didn't know that. So I never had to. But if you did everything right, that should be the ending that you get. Um. There we go. Well, I can't. Cannot close out. Oh, is my escape key really not working? Wow, yeah, my escape key's not working for whatever reason. But yeah, just close out of the game instead. It just it just works better that way. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording and we're gonna do like a beginner worker tutorial. <laughs>